Hello and welcome to Key, uh, Real Talk with Elder Michelle. I am so happy to see you all again. I'm glad to be on tonight. It's been a little while since uh, I've been live. So it's good to be on tonight and ready to get started. Oh, yeah. So as you know, I do like to uh, do my um, own little spiels, those that I do um, give you a little information before we get started. So I have a few things. First of all, I would like to invite each and every one that are in the uh, Clinton area, Sampson County area, uh, that you come over to 114 North McCullen Road, Clinton, North Carolina, on Sunday, Mother's Day, and celebrate with us in our Mother's Day service that starts at 11 o'clock. Uh, I will be bringing forth a word from the Lord to address mothers everywhere. So if you have an opportunity and you are in the Sampson County area, you are in the great city of Clinton, won't you join us? Next, I would like to tell you that on the 15th of May at 3 p.m., we will have none other than Elder Angela Whitehead who will come and do our Women's Day program. It is entitled, The Power of a Praying Woman of God. So come on out and join with us and celebrate. Now, the next is, if you have an event, if you are doing a planning, a wedding, a family reunion, a reunion of friends, if you are having a graduation party, a baby shower, a bridal shower, if that guy has finally asked you, will you marry him? And you are planning your wedding. Come on and see us at C3 at the venue. We have everything you need under one roof. There is no need to go shopping for your venue and then for the food and then for your bartender, then for your uh, uh, day of coordinator, then for your photographer. We got it all under one roof because we have our very own at C3 at the venue. They they have their very own, I say we because I'm a part of them, um, our very own catering company, greatest food you will ever put in your mouth. They can, oh, we ain't even going to go to talking about that because I could spend some time talking about how delicious the food is. It is quality food, not at a break your bank price. We will sit down with you. We will do a tour and a free consultation where we can show you what you can get. We have packages that entails everything so that you only pay this one price and you don't have to sit and do all of this. We give a tasting for those that are getting married. When you choose our catering company, we will do a tasting. We oh, They have so many different things. I can't even go into all of them. Now, this is not all that these people have. This is a wonderful place. Also, if you have a business, and it was out of your house, but you now are expanding. You want to have office space, or you at least want to have an office that is a legitimate business address. See us at C3 at the venue. See us at C3 at 5205. They are the business hub. They have space for offices. They have virtual offices. They have a little internet cafe going on in there. I'm trying to tell you, you need to see them. They got great things going on. And these people are wonderful people that work with community. They try to help entrepreneurs get their uh, business off the ground. And they have so many different um, resources that it's a great place to get with. So see them. 919-615-1457. Tell them Elder Michelle sent you and you would like for me to work on your event. 
I'm always available. Just check with me. All right, so give them a call. Now, let's get into the word of the Lord, okay? It is time to get into the word. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. You got 30 seconds to go get your Bibles, get your pens, get your paper. Okay, let's get started then. We are ready. Uh, we are going to be coming out of the book of Ephesians, and we are going to be in the sixth chapter. So Ephesians 6, if you'll go ahead and get, start, get yourselves there, we are going to be in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and we're going to start at the 10th verse. So if you'll go ahead and get that. And then we're going to go ahead and get into this. I am, of course, fiddling with my technology. You know me. Even though it looks like i gotten better, I'm still fiddling with technology. Okay. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all all saints. Tonight, I want to ask you, are you ready for the war? Are you ready for the war? When soldiers go off to war, they go with things uh, 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 ready. They have all of their stuff together. They ready to go. Um, they, they have things prepared. Um, so we want to be ready to go into war. What do you need when you go into war? First of all, no soldier goes into war without being armed. They have everything that they need in their armor. The Lord said, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. First of all, you got to understand something. You don't wrestle against the flesh and blood, but we fight against powers and principalities of power. So we are fighting spirit and we need to know that. So what is the pur purpose of me telling you this? Because you know, this is real talk. And when it's real talk, that means that I get on with you and I get down with you about what's going on. So let's get down with it right now. First of all, the church needs to learn that you ain't fighting each other. See, that's our problem. That's the biggest problem that we have right there. We spend too much time forgetting that it is powers and principalities of power. Forgetting that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but uh, 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 and against the root, but against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What does 
spiritual wickedness in high places mean? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that question. Let me tell you, it is talking about those that sit in the church with your titles and you ain't about nothing. Now, this real talk, I might even say it, Jack, but I ain't. I'm going to stay straight with you. Here's what the problem is. You get your title and then you start thinking you entitled. You get your title and you forget who put you in the place in the first uh, place. You start thinking you did this all about yourself. So you start thinking that you got it going on and you all that and a bag of chips. And this is when the spiritual wickedness get into the high places. See, what it means is those people that are supposed to be the leaders, you know, the pastor, the preachers, the deacons, the mothers, they're the ones that are laid. They the lay out of the church. They the foundation. The mothers, they teaching the women how to be young ladies, how to be respectful, how to not lay down and get up with fleas. They teach the women how to be young women of God, praying women. The mothers of the church are supposed to be teaching the women how to be a virtuous woman. Then you got the deacons. The deacons are supposed to be teaching the men how to be real men. See, just because is listed as man doesn't make you a real man. What makes you a real man is when you are a true follower of God. A real man is one that knows how to be like God. They know how to feel, show their emotions. They can be, they can show their emotions and still be strong. They know how to look after their home, their family. They know how to take care of their family. They're not ones walking around uh, uh, tripping here and there with everything and every Tom, Dick, and Harry that shows up. They ain't tripping over uh, lights in the dark because they out at three in the morning with somebody else's wife or with somebody else's uh, child instead of being home with their wife. Real men take care of home and heart. That means they take care of the home. They take care of their loved ones. They take care of their children. They're there for their children. They're not absent. But a deacon, he's supposed to be teaching that. The preachers, y'all supposed to be going around and in that church, not waiting to see if I'm going to get to preside this Sunday or is the pastor going to be out so I get to preach. You should be prepared to preach at any time. Because here's the thing. I don't have to give you no heads up. You're supposed to always be ready. You never know. I'm telling you what, I can tell you, I use my pastor for an example. We came in one Sunday, all of us, we just the happiest little lambs, ain't thinking nothing. He gonna look at us and say, um, <clears throat> y'all gonna preach this morning. All, all of us is looking at him like, what do you mean? We gonna preach this morning. He done looked at all of us. Said you gonna do a little sermonette and and uh, uh, go out and preach. I ain't gonna preach this morning. But here's the thing. Thankfully, we were ones that was always ready. Be ye also ready. We went up there, and the Lord used each and every one of us so that we actually tied up everybody's sermonette came together to create one good sermon. But here's the thing. Preachers, where I'm going at, you need to stop thinking that, oh, I sit here and look all prim and proper and I'm so honorable and everybody ought to kiss my ring because I'm the preacher and I'm an elder and I'm a minister. No, baby, you're supposed to be a servant. And then let us get to the top of the totem pole because you know me, which we ain't the top, we the bottom, but we Sometimes think we to talk. The pastors. Pastors, you are supposed to be laying in prayer and supplicate. You know that last one, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Yep, yeah, that's what we supposed to be doing. Yeah. So here's the problem. Wickedness in high places get in there because of our pride. It gets in there because we get all 
boastful. We start pushing our own selves up and we start believing our own hype. But you better start understanding that we are in war. And if you ain't got on the whole armor of God, you ain't prepared for war. You better start getting prepared. What then does it say? It says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. See, you can't put on half. A good soldier don't go out and he got a sword and a shield, but he ain't got his helmet on to cover his head and keep it safe. He ain't got the right shoes on so that he can walk over the terrain and it won't hurt his feet. Yeah, instead, he's got the whole armor on. And every time I think of the whole armor of God, I think of the Roman uh, soldiers in the day, back in that time, with their, they had big shields that covered all of it, and they wore it here on the arm. So you put it like this. They had their swords, which was ready, always at the ready, depending upon uh, <laughs> what side they, they were, the, whether they were right hand or the left. But they had on all of their armor. They didn't go out with half. So you got to put on the whole armor because if you don't have on the whole armor, you can't withstand in the evil day. And let me tell you something. Why has the church fall has, has fallen down? Why has the church become weaker? I'll tell you why, because I'm glad you asked that question too. It is because they standing around with half of the armor on. Well, Elder Hint, what you mean? Elder Michelle, that the church got half the armor. I'll tell you. I'm glad you asked that question, too. Let me go into it. I'm going to get a little deeper here. We done took off half of the things in the Bible, and we gave it an excuse and said it's okay. I'm going to let that sink in for a sec because I want you to get what I'm saying. We took half of the Bible and got rid of it in the church and said it's okay. And we did it because we liked the money that they was bringing. You know, the ones that don't align with the word of God, but we want to put them in positions. We give them big time positions in the church. Why do we give them those positions? Simply because they line our pocket. The more money you give me, the more freedom I give you. Uh, many times we don't preach the word of God. We preach prosperity because we want somebody to keep prospering towards our pockets. Preachers don't preach that you're going to go to hell if you don't get your life right. Preachers don't print, preach, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They don't tell you that there's a lake of fire waiting for you if you don't follow the commandments that the Lord God has left for us. We don't like to tell people that you're going to die and go to hell if you don't get right with Christ. We want to tell them God is love and he loves us all and give us some more money. We like to tell you what you like to hear. I'm sorry, I'm not charming that way. I will tell you exactly what thus saith the Lord, and you can take it as it is. That's me. That's the way I roll, okay? Because it's real. I keep it 100. I don't play these games. On this, this is the uh, this is the channel for clean entertainment. So I don't. I'm not here to entertain, but I am here to give you the clean word of God. I'm here to tell you that endure entertainment. I like that word, endure entertainment, because it means to endure while the world entertains us. Okay, uh, but we're going to, uh, I'm going I'm to I'm work that one of these days. Just wait on it. So then it says, um, so that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. See, here's the thing. You ain't got to do nothing but stand. But you need your whole armor on because with your whole armor, God can do the work. See, because he done told you, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. This battle is not yours. It's the Lord. But here's the thing. He uses us to fight the battle. He uses us because if we put on the whole armor, we can fight this battle because this is a spiritual battle. It is not a physical battle. But you need to have on 
everything so that you can be ready for war. Are you ready for war? Uh, when we get to 14, it says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Okay, first of all, that stop pin cushion right here. Let's talk about that. Having your loins girt about with truth. Let me tell you something. If I was teaching and preaching gospel, uh, uh, anything but the gospel, then I don't have truth on my side. That means I have left a chink in my armor because somewhere along the way, the devil is going to come along and he's going to trip me up, especially if I'm standing up here and I'm, I'm getting too big. If I'm getting too big and too bold and too many people start listening to the word of God, but I done told something that ain't true, he will pull that thing up and throw it out there. So you need to be honest and true at all times. Make sure that the word that you preach comes out of this Bible and not out of your head because it's what you think. Teach and preach nothing but the gospel. I teach and preach nothing but the unadulterated gospel. I don't step outside of the Bible. It's here. It's meant for, it is good for reproof. It is good for helping you to change your life. It's good right by itself. I don't need to change nothing. So be sure that your loins are girt about with truth. That's the first fighting thing. Because if the devil can't catch you in a lie, he already done lost a point. Then it tells you, and have it on the breastplate of righteousness. Good living, moral living, it's a wonderful thing. But let me tell you, it is not righteousness. It is not righteous living. As we talked about last night in Bible study, when you are living a moral life, that's by law. And the law condemns. The law does not save. It condemns. It tells you what you're doing wrong. It never tells you, good job, well done, good and faithful servant. See, it doesn't give mercy because it's justice. It does not have compassion. The law does not feel. It has no emotions. It is black and white and as simple as that. There is no goodness in it because its job is to tell you what you're doing wrong. So you need to have on the breastplate of righteousness. That means you need to have moved from, from moral living to righteous living. That means you are following according to what God has uh, commanded. You are following what thus saith the Lord. You are doing the work of the Lord. That is what you are supposed to be working on at that time, so at, uh, at all times, excuse me, at all times. We are supposed to be working on the word of God in our lives so that our righteousness, our breastplate is to cover us. So here's what, what does the breastplate do? The breastplate keeps you from getting to my heart. If I've got Jesus locked up in my heart, if I got him and I done opened up the door that he was knocking on and I let him in, he is there fellowshipping and supping with me. Then he is with me at all times. And I have to protect the heart so that the devil can't put no hardening power in it. I got to make sure that it stays open to God, that it is willing and malleable in the hands of the Lord to do what thus saith the Lord. This is problem in the church. We didn't keep on our breastplate. So we ain't got the breastplate of righteousness covering our heart. And the devil got in and put some cement in it. And what happened is the cement then started to formulate over your heart. It's hardening it up. He put the power of evil. He put the power of hatred. He put the power of envy, the power of jealousy. He stuck that inside your heart. And your heart became hardened against your sisters and your brothers. This is a problem in the church. This is why we fight all the time. This is why we don't know how to get along. This is how come we don't know how to love each other as we love ourselves. This is why we don't know how to treat each other the way that we want to be treated. This is why we run each other down and we run we backbite and backstab this is why we scandalize this is why we kill with the tongue because the devil got through 
because you didn't have on your breastplate on. Are you ready for war? I don't think you're ready for war. Uh, and war is coming. Um, 15 says, and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace here. Now, let me say this. We say this scripture, but a lot of times people leave off that last little part. They just say, and that your feet is shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, this is the problem in the church. I'm talking to the church here. You hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you that you're wondering why it's always something going on in your church. You're wondering why it's always some upset, some stirring up. Why the deacons and the pastor can't get along. Why the mothers and the sisters of the church can't get along. You're wondering why the deacons and the trustees are always fighting. You wonder why the pastor and the trustees can't get on because the church Trustees trying to tell the pastor, we ain't going to give you this. And the pastor trying to tell you, yeah, you is. You get, you wonder why there's always some issue going on in the church. When Jesus already died for our issues, I will tell you why. Because you ain't prepared for war. Because your feet is not shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Meaning... You go around putting out fires in the church. Instead, we don't have those. We have people that go around setting fires in the church. They don't have their feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. If we want our feet to hit on solid ground, holy ground, we need to start having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That means that when I call you, you ain't expecting to get some juicy tidbit. Instead, you looking at the phone going, all right now, we getting ready to have prayer service. Uh, I see sister so-and-so on the phone. I know that she getting ready to impart a good word. I know that he getting ready to tell me something good for my soul. That's what you're supposed to be looking for preparation uh, 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 feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace uh, not something to tear up the church not somebody being a busybody because your feet is shot uh, with the preparation of gospel and it's the gossip not the gospel truth but gossip truth we need to start looking at these things I see then uh, as we move to 16 it says above all Taking, oh, here we go. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. See, it didn't say quench the, it said all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the fiery darts. See, if you have a, your shield of faith, um, um, if you got the shield of faith, that shield right here, and you got that shield of faith, when the wicked try to oppress, you know how to block. I feel like Wonder Woman when she had them bracelets on. Yeah, know how to block. When you got on your shield of faith, that's what your faith does. It's like, oh, you went for me. Right. Ah, got you right there. Huh? No. See, we got to learn to be prepared for war. Where is your shield of faith? Where is your faith? What are you hoping in? Where does your hope lie? Is it lying in the Lord? Or is it lying in man? Is it lying in your possessions? Where is your faith? See, this is the thing to fight with. When I got the shield of faith, it keeps me covered. And it will quench the all the fiery darts of the wicked. And then it says, and take the helmet of salvation. You got to keep your mind, baby. Keep your mind. We talking real talk. Let me get down with you right here. Let me get down in the nitty gritty. Stop putting and letting people come and put a whole bunch of junk and nothing in your brain. And then you walk around thinking, wonder if that's true. I wonder if that's so. Let me tell you something. You want to fill your brain with something? Go read the Bible. Fill it with the word of God. 
put on the helmet of salvation. The Lord God has already made salvation accessible to you. All you need to do is put on the helmet of salvation. What is the helmet of salvation? It is the mind of Christ. It is to put on the mind of Christ. It is to believe that if you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, then honey, it is so. And what it means is that when you put on the mind of Christ, it means that you are saying that I believe that I got power over the enemy. I believe I got power to speak those things that are not as though they were. I feel like I can move mountains. I just might look over to the mountain and tell Mount Carmel, get out of my way because I can. If you put on the helmet of salvation and then have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, when you got on the breastplate of, uh, 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 of righteousness, when you got on all of these things, let me tell you what you're able to do. When the devil comes at you, you're able to fight a good fight of faith. You'll be prepared for the war if you got all of these things that are in place. As long as my mind is on Jesus, if I'm praying for the supplication of all the saints, I don't have time to talk about them. If I have the helmet of salvation on, then my mind is on heavenly things, not earthly things. So then the devil can't use lust in the flesh. He can't use my fleshly desires to make it so. He captures my mind. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Don't waste it on the devil. You need to put on the helmet of salvation. You need to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Take around the word of God. Keep that sword in your hands. Learn of it. Know what it's made of. Watch what it can do. Then I'm trying to tell you, you need to have the sword of the spirit. That is the word of God. If you got your sword firmly in place, there ain't nothing the devil can do. Because with that sword, I can take off Goliath's head with the sword, uh, which is the word of God. I can take down any devil that comes after me. The question is, are you ready for war? Because I don't think you are. When I look in the churches and I see the many different things that we allow to go on in the church, we letting this person run it and that person run it. And we done forgot that the Lord put the shepherd, the under shepherd, over the house. We're the ones that are supposed to be watching out for the souls of the people. But what you got going on, this one telling you how to do it, that one telling you how to do it. Everybody wants to tell you how to run the church, but they won't doing it before. Everybody wants to tell you how to do the job, but ain't nobody there when it's time for the job to get done. Everybody wants to holler. It's my church, my church. I ain't seen nobody go to the cross for it yet, but Jesus. And it's his church. And we must understand and remember that we are preparing ourselves for war. We are in preparation for war. And you need to have on the whole armor in order to win. You can't win if you only got half the armor on. You can't win if you don't know what your sword is made of. You got to go in this thing. 
You got to study it. You got to read it. Because if you read it, you'll know that the war is soon to come. You'll know that we are in the last and evil days. You will know that the, that the, the chariot wheels are rolling. He went out on a cross. He coming back on a cloud. And he going to call his in midair. Because he ain't even going to come down here. See what I'm saying? The wickedness of this world is so prevalent that he ain't even going to come down. He can call his up and out. And he done told you, I come quickly and my reward is with me. So that means that there will be no time for you to say, well, let me, uh, let, let me, uh-uh, baby. If you ain't got it together when he gets here, you ain't going to get it together. And this is the thing that we are not understanding. Churches come together. This is why he said, for not forsaking the assembling of yourselves. Why? Because when we go to church, it is to teach us how to behave ourselves so that we make God proud. It teaches you those things. Because see, here's the thing. When I come together and gather myself with you, and I keep hearing that I got to love. Sooner or later, love is going to take over. Unless I'm just evil, wicked, mean, and hateful, and spiteful, and ain't nothing going to ever change because my heart has been hardened. If you don't protect that heart with the breastplate, the devil would get in. And if he can get in the heart, he'll get in the mind. Because first of all, he'll make you feel some hurts that won't even really there. I find these days that many of the issues in the church is because people were offended without really being offended. If you understand what I'm saying, it means you're so thin skinned that someone said something and you cop the attitude about it and they won't even trying to be ugly. The preachers is having a hard time trying to tell you we have to figure out how to do it. Because if we say it this way and just be blunt according to the word of God, somebody going to get mad. So we worry about how to tell you when you wrong. Deacons is scared to say. Pastors scared to say. Mothers scared to say. I remember when I grew up, a mother approached me. You won't bout to get ready and say nothing back to them. If they said, baby... That skirt is a little too uh, tight or a little too short. You didn't do nothing but look for your sweater. If you had a sweater, you put it over your knees. If you didn't, you took the towel that they gave you. You didn't run to your mama and then your mama go over and want to jump the mother. That didn't happen because we didn't take it to our mother. Because if we told our mother, then we knew we were going to get it. Because she was going to say, let me see it. Now, didn't I ask you, I asked you, did you need a new skirt? And you came out here looking like this. Because, see, usually we went to Sunday school. They didn't go. They didn't see us until they got to church and eat uh, uh, for the morning worship. You know what I'm talking about, y'all, from my generation. Where that's what we did. We were sent to Sunday school. Our parents showed up for Sunday worship service. So a lot of times. We got out of the house. They didn't know what we had on. But don't let a mother be done got you. Because you didn't go run and tell your mama because you didn't want her to know that you wore that thing that now you're getting ready to get a whipping. But we don't have that in the church no more. Because one, you got the mothers not being mothers. You got the children, uh, their mamas is about as young as they are. So there's no discipline. Because when they went around cussing, we thought it was cute and laughed at it. Well, nothing cute about it. Should have popped that mouth so that they know, they don't let me hear those kind of words coming out. But this is what we got to do if we want to be ready for war. Because the devil is constantly gathering up his army. And he ready to fight. And his army got every weapon of hatred, of 
envy, of low self-esteem, of, of pridefulness, boastfulness, envy. They got the, pride, the, the lust of the flesh. They got all of their weapons in place and using them every day. But what are we doing? We too busy fighting our own fleshly desires because we didn't bring in the fruits of the spirit, love, long suffering, forbearance. No, we didn't bring those things in. We brought in his divination, idol worshiping. Yeah, we brought in his stuff. We better get on point if we want to be ready for the war. Do otherwise, your fight is lost before it starts. Now that's real talk, y'all. I haven't been on in a, a, a while, but we getting ourselves together. We are trying to reboot as a pastor. I find that I'm having more things that I have to do. So I had to take some breaks and then I had some um, family uh, problems that I had that, uh, well, not problems, but it was a family emergency and I had to take care of that. So we're glad to be on again tonight. And I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to put in indoor entertainment. And when it comes up, I want you to ding that bell and subscribe. I want you to go to uh, Real Talk with Elder Michelle, like the page and follow it. That way you'll know when I'm on at all times. And what we want to see is we want to see this ministry grow. I want to see it grow beyond what it is now because I believe that we can get the word out there if we continue to help and support each other. So please tell your friends, tell your family. There is a young lady named Elder Michelle that has a, a show on at six o'clock on Thursdays. It's called Real Talk with Elder Michelle. Let them know I keep it 100, baby. I don't I don't play. I don't cut no corners. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. And we are hashtag Real Talk 100. We are hashtag Gospel 100. Hashtag Endure Entertainment. I want you to look us up. Check us out and follow us. And I pray if there are anybody, any um, people out, any artists that you have music of your own that you're trying to get on some air, send it to me um, and I will play it on this show. I will play it as a lead in so that people can hear your music. Come on and send it to me. If you've written a book or if you got something, send me your little commercial. I will play it. And you can bless me how you feel like blessing me. You don't have to. I, I don't ask for a specific amount. I don't charge uh, pricing. You send me. You see the hashtag, uh, the um, uh, cash app that's rolling at the bottom. So all you do is you send me what you want to send me. And for those that don't do cash app, I believe my email is there. You can send your check. It doesn't matter. Whatever way you want to bless me, do so. But my biggest thing is if you have music and you're trying to get some publicity, send it in. Send it to my email address. Um, it's elderemh at yahoo.com. Send me your clip so that I can play your music. And all you need to do is make sure that you have something in the email that states you give me permission to play this on my show, Real Talk with Elder Michelle, under Indoor Entertainment Productions. If you want to talk to me live when we are online, hit look at the show through bftm.live. These are the ways to follow us and get the real word of God. So that is all I have for you tonight. Be blessed. Put on the whole armor so that you can be ready for war. Be blessed. Stay true to yourself, but make sure you stay true to the word of God.